Hi, I welcome you all to this series discussion uh, on media, communication, and human rights. Uh, uh, Haq, visiting professor, uh, Bard College, USA. I am having a, a guest today with me. Um, she is Abhyaniju Catherine Uday, uh, popularly known as uh, DJ Switch. She's from Nigeria, but she's a research fellow in Bard College. DJ Switch is a Nigerian disc jockey, musician, producer, and human rights advocate who has used her platform in to increase public awareness of violence against peaceful protesters, call attention to the Nigerian National Assembly's corrupt practices, and develop social media content to engage citizens in advocating for human rights and democracy at the grassroots level. As a result of her work, she has faced death threats and calls for her arrest. An accomplished artist, DJ Switch is the winner of several music competitions, including the Red Bull 3 Style Northwest Africa Regional Championship, Glow X Factor, and with her group, The Pulse Star Quest. She was named Cultural Icon of the Year in 2020 by the website uh, Y Niger and was featured in Time Magazine for her participation in the end source movement in Nigeria. She's also the recipient of a fellowship from the National Endowment for Democracy. So I I welcome you uh, switch to this conversation. I'm very glad you are here with me. Thank you so much for having me for me. It's, it's my pleasure to be here. Okay, uh, I we have given a title to this uh, the, today's discussion, uh, Art as a Tool for Social Change. So uh, we, we, we know you have uh, uh, played a role of, uh, for social change and you have used your uh, artistic uh, career to do something for uh, bringing social change. Uh, we will discuss on that in detail. Uh, but before that, uh, can I please ask you to describe uh, contemporary Nigeria uh, as we have uh, known Nigeria as the land of the great writer, writers, right? Chinu Achube, Ole yeah, Swenka, Achube, yeah, uh, yeah. Ben Okri, and many others. Chimamanda Diche, yes. Yeah. Also, I have some um, primary impression about Nigeria that it is the largest uh, economy in, in, in Africa and one of the biggest country, one of the most populous country in Africa. It It is uh, full of resources, especially natural and mineral resources. And for that, global multinational companies, they have their close eyes on Nigeria and they have their uh, many projects of extracting resources from there. But uh, uh, having that much resources, Nigeria is uh, still not that much uh, a rich country because uh, we have heard about many corruptions uh, in the in the system, and we have heard about uh, Nigeria is going through this kind of oscillation between dictatorship and democratic practices, right? So this, I uh, personally, I have this uh, this kind of impression about Nigeria. But would you please describe us about the contemporary situation over there? Well, um, once again, thank you so much for having me here. It's it's actually my pleasure. Um, I find every opportunity that that comes my way to talk about Nigeria, to talk about social activism and change as one of a uh, of privilege as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned, because wherever a platform arises, we must take full advantage of it. And as you mentioned earlier, it's something I've also done with my art mm -hmm. and um, and outside myself as an artist, I've also used my voice. Well, pretty much everything you've said about Nigeria is is spot on. Nigeria is called the giant of Africa, you know, but um, uh, if we're being honest, it's only in terminology, you know, mm -hmm. looking at the size, looking at the population, but uh, a, a giant of none, really. And that is because of also some of the things you've pointed out. A country of over 200 million people as of... 2018 had about maybe 92% uh, poverty level, oh. you know, and, and 
Oh yeah, and that the, there's been a, an increase from that. This was 2018, if I'm not mistaken. The figure was probably over 80 million people. So you're talking about a country rich in resources. Nigeria is not a poor country. You know, there's a misconception that oh, with all of the resources we have, you know, Nigeria is poor. Nigeria's poverty rate are the things we talk about. The country is a rich country. We just have bad, horrible leaders that have no vision. Mm -hmm. You know, that have no no, that can't they can't they're not innovative enough, and they're not even trying to use one of their greatest resources, which is the people. You understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, there would be multinational corporations and other countries around the world seeking to harvest in our country and that's because everyone at a one way or the other are trying to provide for their own people or their own countries either by enriching their people or even if it's enriching themselves um for example if i'm talking about corporations but nigeria uh, has a track record of misusing what we get from the resources we export mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. just given you an example of the poverty level. Uh, and that's because education, again, the things I'm about to mention on here, these are basic human rights violations as far as I'm concerned. The lack of proper education is outstanding, right? When we we think about it, it's there's so many children out of school. There's not enough, you know, school uh, in, institutions built for young people that the government should provide, as far as I'm concerned, for free because we have the resources to do that. Mm -hmm. There's not enough job opportunities for people and, uh, and, and the insecurity level in Nigeria is so, so high. Those companies you were talking about, a lot of them have left the country because of the insecurity. Oh, people find it difficult to do business with Nigeria because of the insecurity. Just recently, the United States um, government had sort of advised and warned their citizens to leave the country. Abuja, which is the capital, which is where, <laughs> that's our capital, where the president resides, where advised the citizens to leave there because of a potential terrorist attack that may happen. Now, this has been happening across the country. Let's not even talk about the flood situation that the government has not even addressed on how to tackle this flood situation. The, you see, you see that I'm thinking as I'm talking because there's so much that if I begin to tell you, we will not be able to cover everything in the time frame that sure, we have. Sure, sure. Nigeria's major problem is mismanagement, a lack of leadership, visionless leaders, and mm -hmm. corrupt and greedy politicians who only seek to enrich themselves and not to better the the, the lives of the the people. So no, the the socio political, you know situation in Nigeria is, is a terrible one, if I'm going to say it straight. Uh, okay. say, uh, you told in the CNN interview that uh, Nigeria is a dictatorship with a, with a democratic face. Uh, mm -hmm. What does it mean? I, it sounds like uh, my country, I'm from Bangladesh, and uh, we are also having uh, uh, authoritarian government in the name of democracy. Yes. Um, I say that, uh, I said that on CNN, and I'll say it again. You know, a democracy is where people can freely, at least at the very barest minimum, freedom of speech is one of the tenets of democracy. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm on exile today because of my freedom of speech. Mm. You know, as you, you pointed know out earlier in my biography, I was a part of a protest along with many young, beautiful inspirational Nigerians and all we were asking for was an end to police brutality mm -hmm. something that has been a bane in our in, in 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 our existence since since I can remember young people who would put on ripped jeans or have dreadlocks like me are targets of extortion mm -hmm. molestation mm -hmm. arrest for no reason many young people have been killed and so these this, this was one of the issues we we're fighting against. It morphed into a bigger conversation, a movement against bad governance, a movement for accountability, a movement against oppression. And instead of the government to at least say, okay, how can we begin to solve the problems 
of our young people or of, of our nation in general, the government sent in the Nigerian army to come and open fire on innocent, peaceful protesters. A lot of yeah, people- Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss on that, that movement in detail later. So let's okay. move to uh, uh, your music career. We want to learn about- so, so, so sorry, so sorry. I was um, I was coming from there to actually, because I just realized I hadn't really answered the question. Yeah. Um, the reason why I was coming from that angle is because once you cannot even have something as basic as freedom of speech yeah, yeah, yeah. then that democracy that is not that is not real democracy yeah. a lot of the democratic front nigeria puts up is because of the international community to be among the table uh, uh, to be in on the table for conversations mm -hmm. um when it comes to the international how the international community views them but how they treat their citizens the policies that they either enact or don't enact makes it um as far as i'm concerned not a democracy yeah i understand so let's let's hear about your music career how is how it started and uh how it went on um there's a great song uh and at the beginning there was a uh, story right uh you were in a yes. in the role of a painter artist so can you please yes. uh tell us that part also the story that you were in young artist uh, you are drawing a great a great paintings but the who was that person the curator or the seller the of the owner of the shop yeah owner of the shop <laughs> so, so the the idea is the idea behind the song really is um uh there's so many people in nigeria that work hard mm -hmm. but don't get the credit or someone else yeah. takes that credit from them. You know, yeah. a lot of the hard workers are behind the scene and they don't get the credit, they don't get paid enough, you know. And so, and also Nigeria is also a very religious country as well. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to marry two things whereby, look, you know, this, this is the situation I found myself, you know, I'm an artist. I had to use something close to my actual talents. And so mm -hmm. the best way to be descriptive in a video is to use a painting. And so I had drawn a lot of nice paintings there that, that people bought. And the owner of the shop never re rated or regarded any of my work mm -hmm. until some customers came and they were, they fell in love with my work. And then he claimed that he painted it. It mm -hmm. was his work. Yeah, yeah. And so while I was looking yeah, at him, wondering what was going on, he sent me out of the shop. So basically the song is saying, look, work hard. Okay. No matter what believe, keep working and Oluwa will change your life because the the, the the blessings come from the hard work and not from what people say about you or what what uh, what they have to offer you yeah and this song has a uh, huge following uh, i as i see on youtube it is uh, it has 349000 views so uh, you can explore uh, 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 DJ switches uh, all songs. It is some of them are on YouTube, and you are having that your that identity DJ on your uh, uh, with your name in your name. So let's mm -hmm. let's uh, let's hear about your music career, how it began, and how how it went on. Oh wow! Um, this was way back in when I was a kid. You know, I know almost all the artists in the world all have the stories that start as a kid, but I promise you, this is a legit story. You know, um, <laughs> For sure. I used to, yeah. I used to, I used to think I would get married to Michael Jackson when he was alive. Oh, you know, I oh yeah, um, yeah. my mom, <laughs> my mom would tease me. You know, anytime he come on television, I was just starstruck. I was so in love with him and his music. I'd sing his songs, dance to his music the way he danced, mm -hmm. and so. I would perform to my pillows in my bedroom. I put all my pillows together and start performing to them, you know. Mm -hmm. So I've always wanted to do music, you know. I've always wanted to write music. Anything that has to do with music, I would put my hand in there. And I remember when uh, we went for the Star Quest and we formed a band, me and my other band members were called The Pulse. We, our very first song was a socially conscious song that addressed the ills about Nigeria it was humorous in a way, but it addressed the ills about Nigeria mm -hmm. and how we should keep, you know, forging ahead. And that song was so big that we were so fortunate to have the American superstar Buster Rhymes on the remix. 
Mm. And so that, and, and then we had the privilege to tour the nation, Nigeria with him, Buster Rhymes. And so I was so excited. And another song in that same album that we released, I wanted, I could hear it, you know, while I would perform on stage with them, I used to do DJ sounds with my mouth. Mm -hmm. because I could hear the sample like oh a DJ scratch would be nice in this part but I wasn't a DJ and so we went in search looking for a DJ and I met this man called Snoop the Damager and when I saw him in action I was like I have to do that I must know how to do that Mm -hmm. but he was such a busy busy man he didn't really have the time to to teach me he did advise me gave me a very very great advice that I, I that I'm so grateful to him for was like look go and buy your own DJ set and mm-hmm. practice, you know, start from there. You must have the equipment that you're interested in. Mm-hmm. And so I used all the money I'd saved up. I even mm-hmm. borrowed some from my band and bought my first DJ set. I didn't even know where the cue button was. I didn't know where play was. So I couldn't get in touch with the man because he was very busy and I had to teach myself. And from that point, it was it was DJ switch, no longer yeah. switch. Okay. You know, and that switch stands for the fact that I can sing, I can rap, I can do this, I can do that. I could do a lot oh, of things. That in that yeah. means switch. Okay. That's what the yeah, because I rap, I sing, I, I write, you know, I do anything I want to do, like the, the piano. I bought the piano one day and I was like, I want to learn this. I started teaching myself. Mm-hmm. And right now at least I can say I'm at about fifty to fifty-five percent a piano player whereby I mean I can read piano sheet music mm. you know what I mean and that's how I am once I want to do something I do it so there's so many things I can do and that's where the switch came from and that talent just teaching myself giving myself hours every day made me come out the best Red Bull three style champion Northwest Africa I was supposed to represent the region in Russia uh, but then the pandemic hit and then the NSAS protest movement. I now mm. had to flee from the country. Yeah. So all of that has so been on hold. Yeah. It went in different directions. So we, we, yeah. we know about, we have heard some songs uh, by a Nigerian uh, musician, Fela Kuti. And even ah. today, even today uh, in the FM radio in the USA, we uh, suddenly we hear some songs are played uh, from Nigeria, so he, Nigeria uh, happened to be uh, having English as one of the uh, leading um, languages in Nigeria. So Nigerian music mm-hmm. is crossing the border and um, and coming to these places like USA and other places. So uh, can you please give us some impression about contemporary Nigerian music? Are they really global oh. or... Oh, yes. Yes. You know, um, I I can't help myself, but I must say, you know, if not for our government, right, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, that Nigerians are amazing people. They are wonderful Mm -hmm. people. They are talented people. Mm -hmm. You know, they are hardworking people. And Nigeria has has a great film industry in Hollywood, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you started with Fela. Fela is a legend. He's he's passed on now, Mm -hmm. but he's a legend. You know, the creator of Afrobeat. And he was his art. I always say this. Fela was uh, not only a musician, but he was an activist. Mm. So, but And his music was his art. He was his art. He was his music. Everything you hear in Fela's music was the life he was living as well. Mm. So it wasn't just singing some socially conscious song uh, and then uh, going to bed. He lived people. the life. Yes. Even his mother, you know, who was also targeted by the government, you know, they lived the life. But um, like you said, authenticity is what makes us really stand out. I I must say this, you know, our pidgin English, our local languages, Yoruba, Igbo, you know, Aousa, how we put our languages in our music, the rhythm of our music. Mm -hmm. It was inevitable that our work will cross over. It was mm-hmm. inevitable, you know. Mm-hmm. Of course, everyone is, um, everyone is, everyone likes to hoard their own thing. You know, okay, this is our country. It's not easy to break into the global market mm-hmm. because of ex- again representation. You understand perspective on how you see that place. But when people started getting a taste of flavors, it's like mm-hmm. our food. You know, it's yeah. our music is packed, filled with flavor. The rhythm. You can't help yourself but move. So it's no surprise to me that it's broken 
that barrier. It's been doing it since, but now it's so obvious. And that's thanks to the interconnectivity that we see mm -hmm. today. The world is in a much smaller place now because of the internet. Yeah, and so a uh, big shout out to our, our young boys, our girls, our, our legends of before. They've made timeless music. They keep making timeless music. And and we have a, a Burner Boy, Whiskey, Grammy Award winners, David Doe. He's spectacular. He has a show coming up at State Farm Arena. Thames is another amazing human being. She uh, she wrote for Rihanna on the um the new Wakanda Forever coming out. She also voiced oh, in the Wakanda. Yeah, so right. there's so much going on with our music. And it's mm -hmm. the one thing I must say before um before I, I stop answering this question is that because of these are artists, from our music to our film to our writers, like you mentioned earlier, because of them, they are the ones who have put a positive um outlook on the country who yeah. has put a positive yeah. outlook on the people. That's why people, there are people who still want to go to Nigeria. There are still people who want to meet Nigerians because of the work that these amazing people do every day. Okay, thank you uh, for, for giving us some ideas uh, or, or a brief idea on, on uh, Nigerian music and art. So let's uh, go to that incident. What happened over 20 in 2020? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you just described your experience that day. Well, um, I will, I will, I will see if I can do the the blanket description because uh, it's a very tough, um, it's a very tough memory to to mm. always touch on, especially when I'm asked. Um, I've taken the last two years working on my mental health. The last two years working on on trauma. You know, some nights it's hard to sleep. So I will do a blanket explanation. On the 20th of October, 2020, um, protesters were gathered at the Lekki toll gate. Lekki toll gate is a, is a sort of like a, yeah, it's a toll gate, but it's, a, but it's on a major highway. And so, and before that 20th, a couple of days prior to that, or weeks even, you know, we had been protesting peacefully, mm -hmm. demanding for better governance, demanding for accountability and end to police brutality. One of the, the the demands that we had was that the government paid our security personnel better, you know, and and visit their living condition. They, where they live is so bad. It's so bad. You know, mentally and phys psychologically, that can do something to someone if you see where a lot of uh, police barracks and a lot of these places. Inter inter you know, uh, for a while, that is, uh, it was the movement was known as End SARS movement, and SARS is a special yes. anti robbery uh, squad, right? SARS is, is a spe in, yes, SARS is a special anti robbery squad, yes. It, it is formed in 1992. Yes, yeah, I, I, that yes. is, uh, this, this information yes. came from internet, and and there is a um, say, light movement or a discussion or a discourse against. This this uh, the, this squad, right? They were like to protect well, this, something. This squad, they were they have been doing the same thing. I mean, as the name implies, special anti robbery, anti robbery. Yeah. But they are robbers. Yeah. They are yeah. the robbers. That's, that's the paradox. Okay. They are the yes. They are the robbers. They are the killers. They are the mm. assassins. They are the murderers. They are the thieves. You know, and another another of the demands we're talking about was, you know, you, you need to, you can't just pick someone from a mental asylum and put them in charge of, give them a gun. Oh. You understand? And not to say that they are all from mental asylums, but, you know, we've got it on good authority that a lot of them are ex-convicts, a lot of them are, you know, education, like we we're saying earlier, is key because a lot of these people are are, are illiterates, if I'm being straightforward. Mm -hmm. So you give someone like that a gun, how do you expect them to behave? How do you expect yeah. them to behave when they have some power? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they've been, they've been, they've been terrorizing the place, terrorizing young people, especially. Uh, you have a laptop like this, they just assume, yahoo, yahoo. And, you know, yahoo, yahoo is a term for like fraud, you know, that everyone is a fraud, you know. And so they were harassing, molesting, raping, all kinds of things you can imagine. And so... Building up to that point, I keep saying peaceful protesters because after every protest, young men and women, boys and girls, will clean up after themselves. We would pick trash, 
we would make sure that we cleaned up the that area that we were standing at. There was a time that, um, you know, and I have pictures and all this stuff. There was a time we were standing and holding hands, you know, some riot police had gathered in front. After a little while, we offered them drinks. We offered them drinks, not the way they said they offered it, us drinks. So it was they a offered us death. peaceful movement, right? Yes, we offered them drinks, water. We were talking to them saying, look, we're actually here for you. Not against you. We're, we're, yes, you're brutalizing us. But we're here, long, big term, or rather, how do you say it? Uh, big picture is to help you so that you, if you get paid better, you would, we will not look so enticing to be robbed, you know? And so up until that point, the government sent in the military to that lucky toll gate. I remember I was on stage speaking when I heard the gunfire. It was coming from like behind. It was the most chaotic thing I, I, I have ever experienced in my life, you know? And so they finished their deeds. They shot so many people. People were taken away in their trucks. And after a while, you know, we were the ones, the, the, the few of us that were, that were left at the toll gate, we kind of felt like, almost like what just happened, but we know what just happened. At the same time, it felt so, it felt like it would never end, but it felt so short. You know, I can't explain. This is one feeling that I've never really been able to get my finger around. You know, adrenaline is pumping. You're afraid. You're also trying to mask your fear with confidence. And I'm not going to lie. I was so scared. But I knew somewhere in my heart that I had to show people what was happening. You know, I guess you, I've, I've tried to think about it over and over. Sometimes when I find it so hard to sleep, I guess in my head, I'm like, what was my rationale? <laughs> you know, because it was, it was crazy. And so after that, the next phase of, of gunfire and, and, and attack was now from the police. So there were two sets. The military came, the police came. Thankfully, I was able to gather some shells from the floor, me and some other protesters. You know, I remember having it wrapped around my shirt because the nylon that we had put some protest, uh, some shells in had torn open when we heard the second round of gunfire. And now at this point, it was really dark. So we didn't even know the police was coming. And our police uniform is black on black. Coupled with the fact that we're black. So they were like the night. We couldn't see them. You know, so when we're running, you know, they threw tear gas. We couldn't see. I was, my eyes were, I was tearing up. I couldn't see. And I fell. And I just used my hand to pack what I could and put it in my shirt and I was running. And so a few days later, um, and there were other things that happened in between. The hospital went to the, the church where we, we stayed at for refuge. But a few days later, when I narrated the story on my Instagram page and showed the shells, that was where all of my troubles began, you know? And here I am today, you know, outside the country, Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, that that's that's it in the summary. Uh, but the movement largely was against police brutality that that morphed into a fight against bad governance, a, 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 a demand for accountability, an end to corruption. And we have that right to demand that the president, the current president of Nigeria, took part in protests when he was protesting against the previous government. This wow. current president of Nigeria took part in a protest when he was protesting against this uh, against the former president, good luck, Jonathan, alongside Tinubu, who is used to be the former governor of Lagos State. He was also instrumental in bringing this current president into power, a president that promised Nigerian people that one naira will equal a dollar by the time he's done, and he will build one refinery every year he's in the office for four years. <laughs> you talk about the resources we have. How can we be an oil producing country? We go and refine oil outside. Mm. When you start thinking about expenditure and cost, but today as we speak, in dollar is now equal to 800 naira. Nigerians are in, living in poverty. Nigerians are hungry. Nigerians can afford simple common bread. This same, when you're asking about the social political uh, environment, they like to, 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 to blame COVID-19. Yes, COVID-19 caused a lot of, 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 of problems from deaths to 
loss of jobs, especially when you look at the, the hospitality business. There was so much that happened. It happened to the world. But when I think of governments like the United States of America, for instance, and how they made sure to the best of their ability, they were giving relief checks. They were trying mm. to send food to people. People were making videos like, wow, they just delivered food to my house. We have we have our politicians, you know, one called Ali, Ali, sorry, Ali, if I'm not mistaken, Macaulay, you know, she, a house member who took COVID-19 palliatives, put in her house, removed the, the sticker on it, put her face and, and did a, a birthday celebration with, with that. I mean, when you think about the level of of corruption and irresponsibility. We had so many of, of so many COVID-19 goods hidden in warehouses, which we were very certain they wanted to use as giveaway during political rallies and stuff like that. Meanwhile, people were hungry. Mm. You may have seen those pictures go viral of people climbing the, the zinc, the ceiling to get to food. These are perishable goods. These are things that were donated from other countries, resources that were donated in support of the problems and the, the, the severity of how the COVID-19 affected Nigerians, who, like I've mentioned to you, over 80 million people, this is as of 2018, the statistics, are living in poverty. So how do you, how, how, how does one begin to reconcile with a government like this when they have failed their citizens, what they did in a quote-unquote democratic society, they've overturned. Now, if you mention NSAS at all, you will see they will send all types of police gear and everything to that toll gate in preparation for young people who have no weapons, who have no plans even, yeah. of, of destroying or fighting. Meanwhile, terrorism is, is, is ravaging the country. Kidnappers are kidnapping people. Terrorists are bombing places. A young girl was killed in the north because they felt she 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 insulted Allah, a young girl was set on fire. These people went on on their phones and recorded this recorded this thing. They were live, but somehow our government can't track those people down. But they can track me. They can track an innocent person who is just saying I don't like the way the government behaves. Mm. So uh, you are in exile now, but. Uh... How how is the your your nature of activism at the moment? Do you have connections to your fellow activists back in country, or are you focusing uh, largely on the global arena uh, as, uh, to to do your all kind of activism? How what is the nature of your activism now? Well, um, thankfully, I still communicate with a few people back home. And some other um, human rights activists that are on exile as well. Um, a lot of the conversation is really around um, more discussion, how we can support what we can do from where we are, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but largely, I've been using my voice, you know, to, to advocate for young Nigerians that have been brutalized by the police, mm -hmm. you know, young Nigerians that are, are out of school. You know, thankfully, um, I'm alive today. You know, I can't say this for many people, and I'm terribly sorry for that. So it made me realize that, okay, this is this is where you are today. You're lucky to be alive. Mm -hmm. Are you just going to go and carry on? And so I said, no. You know, the, the one benefit of, of a... Of a uh, uh, I mean, nothing, there's nothing, how will I put this? The entire situation is unfortunate, but there's a benefit. And, and that's because I'm a pragma pragmatic person. I like to see where can I find benefit and how can I use that? The benefit is that because I am alive today, I've been able to speak to people who I would have never been able to speak to before. I've been able to walk into rooms that I've, I would have never thought of walking into before. And so those opportunities, I make sure I don't slack. I don't sleep. Yeah. I make sure that if I'm sitting in a room, I had the, the privilege of speaking to the, the representative, Karen Bass, of the United States government, and I was able to, to explain some things to her and appeal to her and say, look, you are in, 
in this position, what can you do if I tell you this story? Mm-hmm. How can you, how can you, because, you know, again, I keep using the United States because the United States is this unofficial big brother to everybody in a sense. So when you think yeah. about, oh, I need help, you almost, you know, you think about them or you think about the United Kingdom and places like that. And so when I find myself in, in rooms or, or Zoom meetings or something with certain people, I say, look, this is what we're going through. All of this aid you're giving to a, a government that is coming and telling you, oh, we need so, so amount of money to help young girls who are not in school. How much of that money has been accounted for? It's high time you start asking for accountability yourself. You're even wasting your own taxpayers' money. If we're being, if we're, again, I like to say things as plainly as possible. If I am giving you money, Famid, every time you say there's a problem, there's a problem. At some point, I should ask you, have you, haven't you solved this problem? Or can I see some record of some, some yeah, you know, yeah. resolve going on? That because I'm taking money it. from, yes, I'm taking money from my own people, or I'm taking money from my savings, or I'm taking money from my investments. Wherever I'm getting money from, I'm giving to you. But you're using it to send your children to school abroad. You're buying different properties mm. all over the mm. world. A lot of them are blowing this money. Uh, these are these huge amounts of money on on rubbish, on parties, on securing their power, not securing the people not helping the people. At some point, I think the international community has some blame in this. They need to start asking, what are you doing with all of, and I'm talking the type of money we're talking here. It's not $2 million. I'm talking hundreds of millions of dollars, mm. one point something billion dollars. Mm. You know, some types of money that if I look at the exchange rates, this is even as of how many years ago when the exchange rate was still 300. In fact, how many years ago when the exchange rate was 100 and something naira to a dollar? If you gave me a billion dollars, I will do magic in Nigeria. I will do wonders. But somehow we never see. It's only during elections that irresponsible lack of, of vision, you see it at its peak. Then they come out and they buy bread and they sit down by the roadside in some uncompleted building for a school and be feeding children and saying, I will be a good president to you. <laughs> as part of the uh, election campaign. Okay, um, uh, what happened to that movement and search movement? Uh, um, and what are those activists doing at the moment uh, back in Nigeria? Is there any outcome of abolition that SARS? No, I mean, in all fairness, the government had said, oh, we have dismantled this um, SARS where they had done before and had done before. But somehow SARS is like Jesus, you know, it resurrects every time. <laughs> and so and so now... In, in, in different uh, names? Yes, now they've been rebranded, you know, oh. to SWAT or something like SWAT. that. Okay. Um, very unoriginal as far as I'm concerned. And... and but with regards to the movement and SARS, it's not a matter of what has become. And SARS has, has, uh, oh, you know, as if when I say what has become, I say for oh, wow, so where's everybody now? No, and SARS has been emblazoned into the very foundation of this generation. Mm. It is an identity. I always say this. It's no longer just a you know, I was a part of a protest. NSARS has become an identity yeah. for many Nigerians. NSARS stands for something. Apart from, apart from protesting bad governance and police brutality, NSARS showed something that a lot of our politicians for years and years and years have used as a tool to put fear into us. During the NSARS protest, I, I, I had never seen anything like that before. People from different religion, different ethnic backgrounds, you name it, different gender. We were all there. Mm. It was, it was, it was a beautiful sight. And we were there peacefully. Not even like, oh wow, no, you don't be here. On 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 Fridays, when the Muslims amongst us wanted to pray, we made a we made sure that they had space, we made sure that they were comfortable, we would surround them. They were protected. Everybody was fine. When we wanted to do it, was fine. I remember that day on the 20th, before we opened the, before we started the protest, 
there was prayer and I called for a Muslim, a Christian, whatever religion you are, please mm -hmm. come and give one, one, one. And everybody was saying amen to everybody's own. Mm. So it is not limited only us. and only to the it, of that of the south. South. It no, was more than no, that. No. Yeah. It was that's why I said it was it was it it answers answers has become an identity. It it shows the true character of Nigerians. Without the fear mongering mm -hmm. politicians we have, answers yeah. showed the true character of Nigerians that we can work together, yeah. that we love each other, that we want the same thing. Because these protests erupted in different parts of the country with the same message. It is the government. In fact, I, again, in all fairness, I can see why they were afraid. Because they had never seen anything like it before. Mm -hmm. But instead of working with us or working to ensure that their people are happy or even be happy generally at the fact that, oh, Nigerians can actually work together. So there's nothing to be worried about. They try to stoke fear. They try to infiltrate the protests with their thugs. In, like in Lagos State, for instance, where I was at, they were trying to put thugs in the midst of protesters so there'll be some rockers and then they would blame the protesters. But it never worked. So you so feel the NSAS, kind of... the NSAS movement is an identity. It is there yeah. to stay. It's in the history books. It will always yeah, be yeah. there. And once yeah, you identify... That historical okay. reference for future generations too. And Absolutely. Do, do, do you see, uh, so you can feel and you can see the influence of that movement in in general in every aspect of the society as, as you are describing? The, absolutely. The NSAS protest was a leaderless movement. Mm -hmm. Not the type that the government or we can send someone to come and you know, corrupt that person. Mm -hmm. It was a leaderless movement. And you can tell today, when you look at the political landscape, from, from the viewpoint of the average citizen, those that identify, you know, in that movement, or at least affiliate with, you can see their attitude towards, let me use the upcoming election, for instance. Mm -hmm. There are three major candidates as far as we are concerned. There are other candidates, but, you know, the ones that get the most spotlights, what we see. One is a corrupt drug baron who I believe should actually be in hospice care because when you see him, and I'm not trying to be vile here, when you see him, he's shaking, he's, he doesn't look fit. When you see him, so the it's not me president. trying to be disrespectful. Yes, it's not me trying to be disrespectful. It is a fact. Mm -hmm. The second one has been in power before. The third one has also been in power before. But the third one seems to have seems to be drawing the support of people who, and, and again, I don't have a statistics on this. Just from what I've seen, most of the people I've seen on social spaces, on internet, and all that identify with NSAS as well. So when when they say things like, this one doesn't give us money, that's what we'd like. Which mm. means, to some degree, that NSAS has shown something mm. that you can't bribe me. I don't want your bribe. I want a better Nigeria. Yeah. Oh, you, you want to make fun of this person because he doesn't give bribes? That's what I want. Mm. So now, they started making slog slogans out of it. You know, we don't, we know they give shishi. So which means... We know they give shishi is pidgin English for we don't give a naira, we don't give a cobble, we don't give a cent, we don't give a mm -hmm. dollar. We should be able to. So whoever, whoever supports whoever, whichever candidate, you need to be able to sit with yourself and, and your conscience and say, is this, however someone starts out, is that how I, what I want to be involved in? It's a great question to ask. And so the answers, the reason why I relate the two is because of, again, just what I have observed. I'm not a part of it. Because I'm not there, unfortunately. But from what I've observed, the NSAS protesters, and I'm talking about the protests, I'm not talking about any other organization, just the mm -hmm. people, didn't want a dime from anybody, didn't, in fact, we were spending our own money to help yeah. with whoever we saw that was close to mm -hmm. us. So it's an identity now. It's no longer just a protest. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like Coca-Cola. When you hear Coca-Cola, you hear NSAS. It's something like that mm. in my mind. So last thing I want to ask you, uh, from Philakuti to today's DJ Switch, we see 
music or art has been used as the tool for social change. It's not limited to only entertaining people and getting profits of our artistic products, right? So uh, how do you see, um, uh, do you believe totally that are you, are you sometimes get concerned or frustrated about uh, you using art forms as as an um, entertainment product and for profit only and art form to bring some social change or a blend of both of the uh, aspects. Uh, how do you look at art form? This is my last question to you. Oh, I look at art form as honesty. Any yeah. type of art form. Yes, it's mm -hmm. art is one of the most honest creation ever mm -hmm. as far as i'm concerned mm -hmm. it is so true so it's not it shouldn't be you know bugged down with things like it should only be for social the fact that i've done some socially conscious material i've also done some other fun material yeah. that's art there are days it's like your mood there are days you mm -hmm. feel good and you're happy and chirpy there are days you feel down and you're mm -hmm. blue and sad and art is an expression of those feelings. Art mm -hmm. is, as I've always said, is the real and purest form of communication. So whether you are experiencing some sort of turbulence in your life and that's what you want to talk about, whether it's a love relationship you've been in, that's what you want to sing about. There are some people who live like kings and queens in their own right, yeah. maybe because yeah. of their fame. And, you know, there's so many people just waiting for them at their beck and call. And they think about that, you know, I'm popping, I'm popping. That's their experience. Now, that being said, this is my issue. There is a time for everything, okay? Now, this is not, this is independent of what I've just said. When I say there's a time for everything, when it's time to vote, for instance, people go out there and vote. It, we're voting today. Today is voting day. They even give people, uh, you know, a break from work. So, okay, People that want to vote today can, can take the day off. There's a time for everything. The rate at which Nigeria is sinking, the rate of poverty, the lack of uneducation, the insecurity, the hunger, the sickness, and there's a lack of medical, you know, proper medical institutions in that country. Even our own president leaves the country for medical attention which is an embarrassment, which is an embarrassment when you mm -hmm. think about it. No president, as far as to the, to the best of my recollection, I don't remember when the United Kingdom or the United States of America president was sick and they flew him to Germany. No, they have a state-of-the-art uh, facility, for mm -hmm. even if it's just yeah, for the president. Yeah. So when, when we see the, the level of degradation, right, it is important that creatives... I didn't just say singers. I didn't just say movie makers, creatives who have such a platform and are, are instruments in a instruments in, in, like I said, one of the most, the, the purest form of communication. It's a time to use it. It's a time to be true to, or at least be a representative to your supporters. Not mm -hmm. everybody is living in a mansion. Is it your fault that uh, not everybody is living in a mansion? Absolutely not. I don't think people should be blamed for what they have and others don't have. But if you can, being in a position of authority like that as a creative, it is important, even if it's once in a while, mm -hmm. to use that, that medium to spread a message it could be, you, you don't even need to come and say what your personal affiliation is if you don't want to. But it could be an encouragement of, you know, what you can use your right to do if it's a voting thing, if it's a, you know, learn to read or whatever, make sure you send your children to school. What, I, I'm just even randomly saying things, but it's important that as creatives, we must use, because that's what people of any race, any um gender any ethnic group sees and can relate to music film and artwork yeah so it's important to do things when the time calls for it we must stand up and be human rights defenders in one way or the other especially as creatives thank you 
Okay, you, listeners, uh, we have uh, <clears throat> we have done it. We have completed it. The discussion with DJ Switch, uh, I enjoyed uh, thoroughly, and I hope you have also enjoyed th the discussion thoroughly. Um, uh, I thank DJ Switch again for joining me and having a great conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It's the pleasure is entirely mine. Okay. Thank you so Goodbye. much. Goodbye. Goodbye.